Tallinn is one of the best preserved medieval towns in the world. Yeah. It's kind of like a crystallized form of, of what a town was in the 1400s, basically. I have rediscovered my love towards the old town of Tallinn through a series of episodes that we have shot with the local tourism group. In this episode, I want to share some cool facts about the medieval Tallinn, share with you some places that you can see and visit whilst you're here so that you can fall in love with the city as much as I have. But first, let's have a very quick overview of the history of the old town and the importance of the Hanseatic Lake. Tallinn was established in 1219, which is just casually like 800 years ago. At that time, it was named Revel. And already by the end of the 13th century, Tallinn has joined the Hanseatic Lake, which had a massive influence on the development of the city. And now in these uh, Hansa towns, these towns of merchants, they would value above all freedom, access to wealth, and the opportunity of making your own choices in life. The concept that is borderline very simple nowadays, but something that was revolutionary, may I say, at that point. They were very clever. Like they, they, their function is to go to the other side of the world to bring back to you like luxuries and commodities that you wouldn't even know about. Within decades, Tallinn or Revel became one of the wealthiest cities in the Baltics. The riches of that era you can now witness when you're going to be walking on the streets of Tallinn. And I have to say a massive thank you here to Cedric. He's actually a part of wonderful people called Tales of Revel. These guys do free interactive tours around the old town. 90 minutes of a lot of fun, a lot of history and a lot of like laughter guaranteed. Definitely one of the highlights of what you can do in the medieval Tallinn. Have a quick peek into the oldest pharmacy in Europe. There is 100% probability that you will be visiting the Town Hall Square. And after you have finished admiring the 700-year-old Town Hall, you might as well pop into one of the oldest pharmacies in Europe. It is conveniently located on the corner of the square, so you can't really miss it. First time this pharmacy was mentioned 600 years ago, and it has been working there non-stop on the same premises since. It is a working pharmacy, so if you need a paracetamol or a band-aid, you can go and get it from there. But what makes this place extra special is that small museum room that you can visit, which is basically located at the end of the pharmacy. It's free for anyone to enter. Basically, in this room, you can see different medicines that were used throughout different centuries. Of course, my favorite was seeing the medicine that was used in the medieval times. There is a bottle that has sun-dried dog feces inside, and it was believed that back in the medieval times, a piece of that will cleanse your body and restore your microflora that will help you against the Blake. Who are we here to judge and question that? But this is what I'm seeing right now, and I saw it. Mission accomplished. Number two thing that I will definitely recommend you to do in the old town of Tallinn is to climb one of the towers. At some point in history, Tallinn was the most fortified city in Europe. It had 46 defense towers and approximately 4,000 meters of surrounding walls, which is crazy. And out of these 46 defense towers, 26 have been restored. And there are two towers that I really want to highlight. The Fat Margaret Tower is part of the Great Coastal Gate and it's honestly one of the most impressive defense structures in Tallinn. Every single time I pass it, I will go underneath the gate, I feel uber tiny, super, super small. So I can only imagine how the medieval merchants felt when they first saw the tower as they were coming from the sea and then they were entering the town through these gates. I'm sure they must have been wowed. The structure itself is huge in size. After the 16th century reconstruction, the diameter of the Fat Margaret Tower is 25 meters and the walls are as high as 20 meters. And what is even crazier is that the thickness of the Fat Margaret Tower walls is 5 meters. The main goal was to protect the city from the sea invaders and also to leave this very lasting first impression on the people who were arriving from the sea. 
Nowadays the Fat Margaret Tower houses the Maritime Museum, so if you'd like to know a little bit more about Estonian maritime history, this is a place to visit. If you don't want to visit the museum, they do have a wonderful rooftop terrace, which is free for anyone to check out. They also have a cafe there, so you can get some like refreshments. And from there, you get some gorgeous views on the old town and St. Olive's Church, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. On the opposite direction, you get to see gorgeous views on the harbor. So if you happen to be visiting Tallinn on a beautiful sunny day, I cannot recommend you enough to visit this terrace. It's a beautiful place to just hang out. And the second place that I want to highlight is the Kick in the Kirk Fortification Museum, which is actually four places in one. You can climb the Maiden's Tower there, you can walk on the city walls, which are quite fantastic. Okay. It makes you feel like you're part of the 14th century medieval Tallinn. I felt like a princess there. This is how it feels to be on top of the world. You get to check out Kick in the Kirk Cannon Tower and you also get to see Bastion Passages. So Bastion Passages are the underground passages and the way they work is that the further down you go, the more back in time you travel. So the very beginning of the Bastion Passages, there is an exhibition from the Second World War, which I personally wasn't a very big fan of. But as you walk further down, you get to see stone tombs and slabs and carvings from the 13th and 14th century, which was truly quite magical. And we were so lucky as the local tour guide pointed out two skulls in the walls. Two skulls in the walls. This is spooky, <laughs> but pretty cool though. I'm scared of them. Two tips that I want to share with you. First of all, the underground passages are located 10 meters underground. So regardless of the time of the year you're gonna be visiting, it's always pretty cold down there. I think around seven degrees. So definitely wear a hoodie. And I would recommend to leave Bastion Passages as one of your last activities of the day. When the sun is set, there is no more daylight. You might as well spend all your time underground. The third thing I want to recommend is to visit the St. Olive's Church and its platform. St. Olive's Church is definitely a grand structure. It is one of the symbols of Tallinn and we as Tallinners really, really love it a lot. It was finished at the end of the 12th century and it is believed that by the 16th century it was 160 meters tall. And according to one source, it made this church one of the tallest building, if not the tallest building in the world. I mean, the claim is highly speculative and a lot of historians do disagree. Currently, the church is 124 meters tall, tall enough that you can actually see it from any corner in the old town. And it has an observation deck that you only have to climb 258 steps in order to reach it. Yes, you heard me right, 258 steps or 17 flights of stairs. Don't get discouraged, it's pretty manageable and the views are so totally worth it. A little bit about the climb itself. It's a spiral staircase and the traffic goes both ways. Steps are not too wide and they are quite steep, but they're definitely manageable and you do have a rope that you hang on to for extra safety. And during your climb, there are two platforms where you can actually chill and rest your feet. And once you do get on top of the observation deck, oh my God, the views are fantastic. On one side, you get to see the old town the upper town and the lower town separately. And on the other side, you get to see the harbor, the sea, the ferries coming in and out. It's a great spectacular view. Honestly, the best five euros I have spent. One thing to note is that when I personally was visiting, it was on a very hot, sunny day. So the spire itself that is made out of metal was super hot. So it felt like I was an egg sizzling on the sun. So definitely bring with you some water and wear a sun protection. Old Hansa is a medieval restaurant which is located in the old town and once you enter the house you are transported just like that in the 14th century merchant's house. The whole thing is just full on medieval. The servers are wearing medieval attires then there is no electricity anywhere you look. There are only candles, candles, candles. And my highlight of the place is the beautifully hand-painted map of the ancient Europe. What makes all the Hansa particularly awesome is the menu itself, as the items that you can find on the menu are the ones that you will be able to find in the 14th century merchant's house pantry. This is basically made as a, like a tasting platter mm -hmm. that would contain all of the elements that you would find on the table of a nobleman or, or a merchant but like the portions and the setting is uh, made to be so that you just get an overview of it. 
Do not expect any chocolate or any fries or potatoes here, but do expect a lot of gamey meat and grains. So as they say in the hall, bread is a friend in our house, and just like our real friends, we don't stab it with a knife, we break them with our hands. And they also do gorgeous, seriously one-of-a-kind herb, honey and cinnamon beers. Last two are particularly lovely. I might have drunk quite a few of them there. Is it a touristy place? 100%. Does it get buzzing? Yes. And you might end up waiting for a table for like an hour sometimes. And the prices are well above average. But you do come to all the Hansa predominantly for this medieval atmosphere. The gimmick totally works. And I honestly cannot think of a better place to experience medieval 14th century Italian than at all the Hansa. cycling through the old town. What I love about our old town is that it's really tiny and compact and you can actually visit majority of the places within like four hours if you're not going to be visiting any major museums. But if you are strained for time and you still would like to see all the places or you would like to inject a little bit of fun in your touristing, I cannot recommend you enough renting a bike and exploring the old town on a bike. You can actually rent the bike with Bolt or you can visit City Bikes office which is conveniently located in the old town and rent bike from that. One thing that you should know is that Old Town of Tallinn is built in layers. Some roads that you will be cycling on will be very flat and long and some roads will be super steep. <laughs> it's not gonna happen! <laughs> oh that will take you all the way to the upper town. We can actually get access to quite a few viewing platforms. <gasps> oh man! One of my favorite viewing platforms is called Patkuli, as you get to see not just the old town, but Teliskivi and Kalamaya and the sea behind it and the ships coming in and out. It's a great place. And this is where the fun begins, because as soon as you're going to start cycling from the upper town all the way down, you're going to gain some speed and it's going to be so much fun. And if you have a couple of hours spare, I would recommend you to leave the old town and cycle along the Pirito Promenade. Follow the red cycling lanes and within like 15 minutes you're going to be in the area, Pirito Promenade, uh, with some stunning views on the sea. What I love about our old town is that the city is tiny and compact and you can actually visit all the places that I have mentioned in this video in one day. I'm not here to say that you should be sticking just to the old town area. We have some wonderful neighborhoods that should be on your radar, such as Teliskivi, uh, Karamaya, Noblesner, Kadriorg. They are gorgeous and you should definitely check them out. And you should subscribe to my channel. Ain't no way we losing inches, climbing them fences, get bruised up, got stitches.